Hi, this is Rich Smith from Simscape with a Cadium CFD simulation of the airflow through a pipe into a box. So let's get started. First thing, we'll go over to the Geometry Tool Palette and select the Box Tool. You'll notice then it comes up with some properties corresponding to the lengths of its edges and this is where we start defining the geometry that we're going to use. So the first thing we'll do is define the box. With this tool and all tools we drag and drop the tool into the view window to use it. And there we have our volume. Let's just shade the faces by selecting all faces properties and then making them visible. There we have the faces. Next we're going to create the pipe which is going to be a cylinder and we'll make that radius 0.2 height 1 and we'll take that tool drag and drop onto this face to use that as the base of the cylinder. Selection confirmed. Next we want to unite these two volumes but before we do that we just need to make sure there's a good overlap between the two of them so we'll transform or translate the cylinder a uh, small distance to fall within the box we take the translate tool we drag and drop onto the cylinder or an edge of the cylinder and there we go now we can unite the two volumes by dropping it on the background which is a proxy for the simulation and then selecting all the volumes in the simulation just the two and then we end up with our single volume like we need now you'll notice that this volume has two planes of symmetry and we can use that thought to actually reduce the size of the overall simulation so what we want to do then is carve out a quarter of this flow volume and to do that we'll use another box slightly bigger than the first which will help us do that so change the lengths drag and drop the box onto the simulation and there we have it right so fit the geometry to the view and now the next thing we want to do is translate the flow volume our original flow volume so that uh, the, we only have a quarter of it uh, intersecting with the, the the new box we have so to do that we'll go back to the translate tool we'll change its properties to be minus 0.5 and we'll again take that tool drag and drop onto the flow volume and there we have our quarter overlap that we want and now we simply take the boolean intersect tool drop it on the simulation, select all volumes to produce our final flow volume. Okay, now we can move on to setting up the physics of the problem. So we go over to the physics tool palette. We notice that there's substances and conditions which are the key uh, players in any simulation setup. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to drop air onto the flow volume to define the interior as air and set the properties for air over here on the volume in the in the volume properties panel we can see that we have a substance and it has various reference properties and solver settings and state all we need to concern ourselves with here is the reference velocity which we change to be minus 10 in the z direction. This value then can be used by the initial conditions and any uh, boundary conditions that need a reference velocity such as an inlet which we'll come to in a moment. Okay the first thing we should do to make it easier to drag and drop our uh, conditions onto these faces is to shade the faces. It makes picking selecting easier. So we right click on the simulation or the background to get the simulation and get all the simulation faces and then we make them visible okay next we go to the wall condition and we drag and drop that onto the background and get all the simulation faces to be wall then we don't miss 
any boundary conditions for the walls that we're going to set in a moment or that we've, that we've now set and now we go in and selectively replace some of these conditions with others so for instance we have the two symmetry places faces that we want to actually specify by dragging and using the symmetry local condition drag it onto the first face and then use multiple select to get the second face and confirm that. Notice as we did that we get some properties appearing on the face that relate then to that condition we've just dropped. So let's now go and do the inlet. Same for the inlet. Here we go. So we take the inlet, drag and drop onto the inlet face and confirm. And notice here that the velocity condition refers to the reference value that we specified earlier so we don't need to do anything further there. Right, turn the volume around and focus in on the outlet and get the outlet boundary condition and drag and drop that onto this face. Okay that's all the conditions set. Uh, the next thing we want to focus in on is the accuracy. Now the default settings for the mesh that will get produced in the case of this geometry are not quite adequate so what we're going to do we're going to help them along by specifying some extra constraints on one of the edges. So we'll specify we want 80 subdivisions down this edge, this long edge here. And there we go, we drag and drop the accuracy onto the edge and it's done. So accuracy is the primary means by which you actually control the accuracy of the simulation, essentially the mesh density. So you can use accuracy on faces on edges, sorry, faces and volumes. And the mesh size will then propagate to the higher entity. So as I've dropped it on this edge, it will propagate not only to the faces that it attaches to, but also to the volume. So that should sort out the uh, resolution of the problem that we're going to solve. Right, now let's move on to looking for results. So as soon as we start asking for uh, flow dependent results such as velocity in this case here, this vector field of velocity, the simulation will know that it has to generate a mesh. So as soon as we drop this or ask for a result dependent on velocity then the mesh will be created and you'll see some feedback here in the bottom left corner. Here we go then. We're going to look at the uh, the velocity magnitude as a set of contours on this face. There we go. A color map. So what you'll see is uh, it's all the same color and we've also got a mesh. So it's basically saying it's now initialized to the initial conditions, the reference value we set earlier. Um, we, while it's still selected, we can double click U again and specify that we want arrows colored by velocity magnitude. And there we have them. And then what we do is we select the arrows and scale them because that's a little too big. There we go and then we scale those arrows so that they fit the picture better. Next, let's uh, change the visibility of the faces so we can see inside the volume. There we go. And what we want to do now is set up a seed face for some streamlines about here. And so what I'll do is I'll copy this face on the end, the outlet. So we select an edge on the outlet, get the face we want, and copy and then we paste and that face now lies exactly on top of the original face so we can't really select those too easily so what we'll do is we'll go into the simulation face list and get the face we want which will be the last one select that properties and then we go over to the geometry and we use the translate tool again to put this in the correct position we want for the area where we're going to release these particle seeds. Okay, 3.5. Now, with again, with the face already selected, we can just double-click the Translate tool and say Done. And now we have the face in the correct position. So, let's now go back to the Results tool palette and back to Velocity. And we can then set up the particles using this face as the seed. And then we need to set the volume as the target. And there we have the particles 
taking off from the face and going straight back towards the exit. That's according to the initial velocity condition that we set previously. So now we can uh, notice now we've got a set of properties that attach to the face and we can change those a little bit to make it look uh, somewhat better. I will make some ribbons, make them a little bit smaller. And with the face still selected, we can color those particle tracks or streamlines with the velocity magnitude by double clicking the velocity and then using a color map uh, on the face, which then carries over to the particles that leave the face. Okay, so that's the uh, simulation setup complete and the results uh, that we're going to look at that will be updated during the uh, solver uh, performing its iterations and so now it's time to actually finalize what we want we just need to see some residuals as the solver is solving its equations so we drop it onto the edge of, a vol uh, of the volume select the volume and then produce the residuals monitor so this shows uh, how well the different equations are being solved per iteration of the solver. So I'll just get this right so we can see most of it. There we go. And uh, so it's just time to run the simulation. Here we go. And while it's doing this, um, you'll notice that we'll hear some uh, audible feedback and that's essentially uh, the sound that gets produced when the equations are converging or the solver is converging and uh, if it isn't then you'll hear kind of a more of a high-pitched ping but in this case it, it should behave well and goes all the way to the finish 500 iterations notice also while um, we were while I was talking and while while it was converging every hundred iterations the 3D window updated and the uh, you can now see the particle tracks um, and the uh, the vectors, the arrows on the symmetry plane changed and updated. So this is the final result that looks uh, reasonable. We can see a big recirculation zone once the uh, the pipe opens up into the box and all that's left to do now maybe uh, is see the entire simulation um, recognizing the fact that this is just a quarter we can actually switch on the other symmetry uh, uh, portions of the simulation so we use this time this symmetry condition which is really for visualization we just need to tell it where the two symmetry planes are in this case X and Y drop that onto the simulation and then we go to the view properties of the simulation and say show us the sim the symmetry uh, portions of the simulation and we see then the other three quarters of the simulation altogether. So that's it and uh, if you want to see more uh, tutorials there's uh, a set on simscape.com at the tutorials under the tutorials link and uh, that's it. Thanks for your time. Bye.